Okay. Just uh, gonna give an update on Starlink. Uh, present conditions where I live, Northern Ontario, Canada. Look at outside, she's coming down pretty good. Um, we're in for actually uh, more whiteout conditions later in the day. So we'll see accumulations of around, uh, I don't know, five to six inches. Anyhow, I'm just doing a little test here to show how the service works with deep snow conditions. Um, I'm not here in this city. I'm about 60 kilometers east. Uh, so just for that known, I have uh, recently got Starlink in December. I had a five meg connection previous to that with Bell Canada, which was a turbo hub that runs through cellular internet. I was getting the five megs package capped at a hundred gigs. And then it was, uh, I think it was $5 every gig over. So yeah, pretty excited with Starlink. Um, but just, just show, uh, we're going to try downloading a one gig file. Um, if it takes too long, I'll cancel it, but it shouldn't be that bad. Here, I'll just show the uh, theoretical rate. Um, I find when I'm downloading from Steam, I always, I don't know, Steam's more optimized, I guess. But uh, with Steam, I'm always above 10 uh, megabytes per second, not megabits per second. Um, so how that equates, like right now I'm in two point whatever. Um, it's all right, that speed. It's uh, like very livable. Obviously I have six minutes left on a one gig file. Um, for somebody that doesn't understand megabytes per second or megabits per second, um, if you convert that right now, which is around 5.5 .5 megabytes per second, that equates to about 50 uh, when you see like on a speed test you'll see 50 you'll see 100 or well, right now that sh would read out 50 if I was to do a speed test uh, so yeah you just because that's measured in megabits per second when you do a speed test so any number you see like in megabytes if it's like 10 that would equate to a hundred megabits per second like if you saw a speed test so as you see, it's jumping all over. It's, you know, just went as high as uh, seven. Um, but the bottom line is I have like two to three minutes left on a one gig file, which is incredibly good because before it would take near an hour or more with my previous connection and I would be capped. So I'd have to watch everything I did. So I would not download one gig files just for the fun of it. Uh, but I'm going to stop it here because yeah, it's, we're all, we're, we're at half now. So, I mean, really that's <laughs> way better. Okay. So we'll cancel that now. We'll, uh, uh, well, actually I'll show you the, uh, stats page. This is directly into the Starlink, uh, stats page. I have my own router set up. Um, there's ways to do it. Uh, I have a video on it, but you could like just type in in Google how to uh, run your own router on Starlink and then put the word Reddit, R-E-D-D-I-T. There's some good uh, posts at Reddit about it. Um, basically what you have to do is your router has to support uh, uh, static routing and you create a, a, a routing table basically uh, you route it to the uh, Starlink um, and then you would just type 192.168.100.1 into any web browser <clears throat> and you would see the stats page otherwise you can't see the stats page if you just run into a WAN port on a regular router on your own router but uh, if you try typing in 192.168.100.1 on in your browser when you're using the Starlink router itself. I'm not sure if it comes up. I should have tested that, but I've heard some people say it doesn't, but I thought it did on mine, but anyway. So anyhow, 
it's nice to have the stats because obviously you can come into statistics and uh, look at your ping and your latency and download usage. You don't get the latency feature. It just says loading. It just throws show, uh, shows three uh, latency test sites, which is CSGO. It's three gaming servers anyway, but really it, it, it's not important because, I mean, it's telling you here what your latency is anyway, but um, other than that, you can go there. You can check your obstructions still. I'm all good. No, no obstructions. You can reboot. Uh, which technically reboots the Starlink router, but because you're not, if you use your own router, it does reboot the system. It doesn't reboot your router though, for some odd reason, you lose connection. So if somehow it inside the dish, uh, I don't know how that works, but anyway, it actually loses the connection and you have to reboot your router after to regain connection. The stow feature, um, some people wonder what that is. That, puts the dish back in the original position, which is uh, uh, in a, a vertical position. When you first get your dish, it's in that position. Anyway, it's for if you were gonna move the dish, you know, package it up or whatever, I guess send it back if it need a repair, that kind of thing. Anyway, you can do this. It spits out an error when you click on this, um, but it works because it, put my dish in stow, even though it said it, it's not, whatever, it doesn't talk to the router, or I don't know what it says, it said an error, and, you know, but it worked. So, and then how to regain, uh, set uh, your position again, back to the satellites is, you have to unplug the brick, the power brick that comes with Starlink, and that's the same if you had your Starlink router hooked up too. Anyhow, that's that, that stats page. Uh, I guess we could run a speed test. And uh, like I said, I don't get too excited when I see these high numbers because one test the next, it'll go down as low as 40 or 50. And that's just, just as fast. Like if you click again, you'll get maybe another lower number. And then you click right after and you'll get a higher number. It's just, I find it's Starlink is, it's good. It's always there. There's a little bit of downtime. Oh, actually, I should have showed that over here on the stats page. Uh, in the last 24 hours, I have one downtime, which was beta downtime. It was two minutes. That's really good lately because uh, since December, in December, I was getting times of like 15 minutes, uh, 17 minutes. And because there's two other downtimes in here that aren't showing up right now because obviously they've improved that but uh i forget what the other two are but anyhow yeah so two minutes and 24 hours i mean wow that's getting to where they're promising 100 percent uptime obviously and my speed test was 87 a latency so watch we'll do it again and the numbers will change like just from one to the next like my latency may even go lower but i've never saw it go in the 20s uh, I think it skimmed on the 20s once. It was like 25, 27. But I generally think I'm going to be in the 30s with my latency. And uh, there, 41. So anywhere from 20 to 50 is really decent anyways for millisecond things. Uh, latency, sorry. Um, uploads, they range anywhere from 10 to 20. Um, so that's pretty standard. I'm getting like around 11 I guess um, yeah yeah uh, so I guess that's uh, about all I have to say it's uh, it's snowing heavy and Starlink works so very good <laughs>